on. I think we'll tackle those those little those little ones here. There's a hint on, of of purple on the um, on these scales, but it's perfectly all right. With the same method, really. Darkness first. This side should be a little darker. And we don't really mind the brush strokes here because striations are really not not not, not too bad on this on this beastie. These horns are also textured. Not by me, by the sculptor, which is nice. It really helps to enhance the rough look of that, uh, that beast. Perhaps even a little more hull right here. You know, it doesn't hurt. There we go. Now, on to the highlighting. First with some skeleton bone and a little bit of ivory. I'm only highlighting the top of the teeth here because, well, well they're, they're not teeth really, they're horns-ish, I don't know. So that's what's lit, really. It's the only part that uh, really deserves any light. The rest is in shadows from, basically from the rest of the worm. There we go. And now to the other side. These might have more light to them. Right, we'll tackle all the rest here later on. For now, let's focus on all those little horns around the face of the, of the worm, if we can call it a face. Let's have a little bit of light here in striations and accentuating the sculpt. We might as well use it since it's there and since it's actually not half bad. This deserves a little more light. I'm doing this with ivory here. These are little dots of light that uh, actually help us pick out all those little details. Let's add some here, actually. You see how we add the striations to our scales? It really tips them towards the light. No pun intended. Tips, scales, no. OK. I'll see myself out. Let's correct the shading here. Let's have a little bit of hull red mixed in with our skeleton bone and ivory. And perhaps with a little bit of a wash down there, we'll achieve something interesting. That was a little too light, so I'm 
going to start highlighting again with ivory in a second, but more carefully. I'm trying to show it to you. This was better thought out. The, the, these little horns are a bit chipped and, and old. So I think it's only fitting that they get some aging treatment. There you are. My sweet, sweet little worm. Okay. Now we tackle the other part here. It's going to be a little tougher because it's uh, in shadows, so we can't highlight a lot. I'll have to go heavy with the whole red, I think. Let's do the wet blending thing on those little horns. The bit of skeleton bone to clear things up a bit. We progressively add more skeleton bone to our mix so as to provide some type of highlight. even in the shadows. And since we're doing wet blending, it all blends in quite easily. Except here, because I don't know why. No idea. Some of these parts, you know, I don't, I just don't know. Now some ivory. But we'll only do it in select places. And mixed in with the skeleton bone too. I'm using the ivory to make little dots of light here. This is a... Uh, a darker way, but even so, little bits of light here and there help pick out those scales. More ivory here. The touch is light, so we don't have to do everything all over again. Now, did I overstep anywhere? I don't think so. Yeah. I think perhaps a little more color here. But not much. I think I'll touch up the scales here and there with little washes, these little horns here. That's too much paint on my brush, but slight wash here on the bottom of some of those. It'll help pick the details out. It also helps to do little lines, striations, as, as, I, as I said. Here, the thing itself is chipped here. We don't really want that much chipping. So I'm actually I'm still correcting a few bits here. There we are.
Good. Now we'll do the scales on the back. Well, not the, the, the well, they are scales, really. They, they're horn scales. I don't know. We'll start with a little bit of uh, skeleton bone. Just to, to see where the light, uh, just, just to, to, to pick out where the light falls. So it'll only be on, on one side of those scales, really. It also helps us to correct any overstep from the previous coats, such as these huge blue stains that you may have seen here and there, and the purple ones. What's interesting about these scales in the back is that they're light on one side and dark on another and that it changes right about here and this scale is merging with the rest of the purple worm and now some whole red mixed in with the skeleton bone so that we can perhaps shade things a little. I'm still working on with, with striations a little. My paint is quite wet, which means I can achieve transparency if I want to. These are washes, so they're not too rough. And it's actually a nice shading instead of uh, simply dabbing the paint on. Might have to start dabbing though here because the paint doesn't want to behave, but never mind. More shading with whole red here. Just in some places. And again, striating the whole thing. That's a nice little shading going on. And now with some ivory mixed in with the skeleton bone, as usual, we'll start highlighting bits and pieces here and there. And everywhere, like the gummy bear. Paint doesn't quite have the consistency I'd want, but I manage. If you can achieve a flowy consistency without diluting your paint too much, it's better. But I think my paint has been a bit too long on my palette, and so it's not. It's it's dried up a bit at its core, and so it's not behaving properly. Never mind. Actually, I don't want to waste it, so I'll use it anyway. Let's put little dots of, uh, of light, little lines here. Nope, I'll definitely have to put some more ivory on my palette, because this one has dried a little. It's a wet palette, but it's not that wet. I've shown you ivory her earlier, I don't need to show it to you again. This is the color we've been working with all this while. But I just need some fresh one. See, always much more flowy that way. That's perhaps a bit too much highlighting. Well, no, it's all right. Actually, it's, uh, it can be misconstrued, but we do need that. We do need that light. It's all right. Perhaps a little bit more skeleton bone here to at 
acclimatize the eye to the whole thing. And a little more hole right there. That's even too much, but uh, there we are. Bit of skeleton bone here, perhaps. Blending it in with the rest, like 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 I do with wet blending, you know. Here, let me correct the shading right there. There we go. And now we carry on with the ivory. progressively blends in with the purple. That's why I'm using lighter, um, less paint on my brush and lighter tones and less skeleton bone because it doesn't really go well with the purple. It doesn't blend in as much. That's the worm, it, the worm's exterior done. Now on to the teeth. Same drill, really. Ha ha. Let's have some ivory on top. We'll try and be quicker about it, but I can't promise anything. Ivory and uh, a bit of skeleton bone, just on the edges. For the teeth that are deeper, deeper set. Perhaps with slightly more but let's put some whole red in the mix for the back teeth, you know, because they're darker. But you still need them to shine a little. So a bit of skeleton bone here and there. Little Sarlacc teeth. I'm shading the teeth with some whole red and ivory and, and uh, skeleton bone mix, but with more whole red in it. I'm doing the top part first because it's more practical for me, but uh, it is of no importance whatsoever. And now some more ivory. They're not exactly pearly white, but um, we do need to catch the light with them, especially those on top. Some of them are a little chipped, a little, uh, little tooth decay and that sort of thing. And it's perfectly fine. Let's have a slight wash of Howard on that tooth. Because it does look a little bit decay. -y. And uh, the root of it isn't red enough. So there we go. And let's put some more bone on that one. It's not just about each tooth, although it is, but not just that. It's about the balance of the tones in the whole mouth. Some teeth need to be a little darker than others, as you can plainly see. We'll do the exact same thing on the bottom. Yes, I know I'm putting my fingers on the miniature, but it's dried, it's all right. I'm not chipping it, promise. Scout's honor, although I was never a scout. And I lost my honor at, you know, at, at, well, it was a while ago. And yes, there's a little bit of, uh, of shading on the side. Another 
all the little teeth inside the mouth. How does he ever close it? I'll never know. I guess that's why the monster is in a foul mood all the time. He's constantly pricking his mouth with his numerous, numerous teeth. Let's have a little more hole red on the, on the gums here. In select parts. I've overstepped on one tooth here, but well, never mind. I haven't, I haven't highlighted some of them, so it's all right. I can always come back to it later. Same drill, same exercise, same punishment for those who don't like it. A little shadow underneath each tooth. And a little highlight on them. First with some skeleton bone. At least a little bit not forgetting the inside that might be lit as well less so but even so we're nearing the end of that miniature and now with some ivory let's oh this we still need to correct some light here With the side of the brush, I am trying to put some light on teeth here. There. I think the teeth are done. So, what else do we need to do? The base. We'll do a quick job of it. We'll grab our filbert brush, get some of the monster brown, mix it in with ivory. Wipe our brush and we'll somewhat dry brush it. Everywhere it needs highlighting. We must not forget that the base is a part of the miniature. We are not done until we've done the base. This shouldn't be too highlighted because the, the worm casts a shadow, but here and there a little bit of earthy tones and light doesn't hurt. We'll get some monster brown, pure, wipe our brush so that we can somewhat dry brush with it again. And yes, it's a, it is a dry brush. And then we'll dab a little bit here. Actually, it's a wash, but only in select places. Wash of the earth stone that we have used. Just on the sides of the worm here because he's, it's, sorry, obviously a little covered in dirt. That's the base color for the ground, if you'll remember. I will mix some 
bestial uh, some monster brown with the whole red to obtain a darker tone and I will have some washes of it here for example it's yeah it's a bit wet blendy if I may use that term I'll put some of the blue in that mix the dark sea blue and again there we go let's highlight things a little more again in selective places and this is a dry brush let it not be said that dry brush doesn't have a place in the techniques used for painting miniatures let's try brush the base color here and there to to do some form of highlighting in the shadows Let's add more contrast with a little bit of the blue mix in the recesses. And perhaps with even more blue. The blue gives us a little bit of, uh, of green, which is never bad when you're doing uh, uh, soil, you know. And then uh, perhaps something a li little bit lighter here. While the paint is still wet. To sort of bring out the, the dry soil. No, that's too much. Let's add some blue. and base color. We should leave that to dry and maybe we'll do another dry brush later or not we could we could do it right away but not a dry brush some sort of wet wet thing. Let's have some darkness here I don't know don't really fancy too much too much light under here. Let's have some whole red and some yeah, that's that's fine. Some whole red and some blue. Well the paint is still fresh. Yes, it's still wet blending. So what? We are not limited to before the highlighting phase with that technique. Now just as a lot little finishing touch. I'll go around this miniature with a little bit of black. There we go. Perhaps a black wash in some places is just what this miniature needs, for the ground at least. Yes, it, it works actually. It genuinely works. I'll carry on with it then. There. And some more black around it. A black rim on the base of a miniature is very elegant, very nice. Uh, you don't need any of those transparent things. Uh, you don't need any of this uh, nonsense uh, about painting it brown or painting it green or uh, just to it seamless or whatever. No, 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 none of that. Black, black, black. Every body uh, is used to abstracting black. And the final touch. The worm has a little wound here. Let's pick it out with a wash of how red.
and here as well. Yeah, that is the purple world completely done. In one morning, um, I think it's uh, it's been how long has it been? It's been uh, three three hours, three and a half hours. For such a large piece, I think it's highly doable. So I hope you liked that uh, that miniature as much as I did, and I hope you liked my tutorial. I'll see you next time. Bye then. Thank you.